Well, we've teased this up enough and delighted to welcome not only uh, Peter Emery, uh, but Fraser Hines Hello. In from uh, the upcoming Panto. You must remind me to mention the Panto because there's so much I want to talk to you both about. We might get distracted a little bit. All right. Uh, okay. But uh, Peter, I appreciate you coming because I know you're a little under the weather at the moment. Yes, I do apologise if I sound a little bit nasal, but hopefully by next week it'll all have gone. Well, as, as Brits say, there's a lot of it going around. There's something going around. So uh, yeah, yeah, well, I blame my wife for this. She gave it to me last week, so um, we're still talking. <laughs> well, yeah, you should. You've got a week to shake that off, but uh, yeah, be fine anyway. Because you're a baddie, right? In the uh, in the show. Yes. Well, yes. He's he's quite bad. He's just sort of um, treated badly, so he treats other people badly. Because this is a production of Aladdin, so that's Abenazza, right? Abenazi, I'm glad you said Abenazi. A lot of people say Ebenezer, oh, which no, is no, suddenly no. into a Christmas carol and screwed. Right. No, it's, it's Abenazi. Okay. Definitely. All right. And Fraser, welcome. It's, it's, it's a real pleasure to meet you. Yeah, oh, well, yes. I'm playing <coughs> the policeman, which I've never done before, actually. Normally I'm wishy washy or, or the emperor or something like that. But, um, yeah. What about, because um, I would have asked the writer this, but um, you'll be able to answer it, I'm sure. These sort of shows, it's the sort of thing that gets reevaluated, you know, uh, rewritten with the times yeah. in mind, because, you know, one or two bits in here, you may change the names and uh, oh, yes, some of the references. Oh, yes, you change the name and uh, obviously put in topical gags, you know, yeah. um, like places. But really, the co- sort of culture, some of the cultural references that from maybe the 50s and 60s need, need updating. Oh, pe- yeah, People yeah. get their jewellers' eyepiece in on the script. Oh, no, we, we alter those two. To, to bring up to date. Yeah, know? sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the audience love that. If you put in something that was been in, in the newspaper that morning, they go, oh, gosh, that can't have been in the script. And they feel all sort of, they've seen something that nobody else has seen. Hmm. And always if, a, if a local football team has just lost, that's mm. always a good one for a baddie. Yes. And yes. Uh, if it's a popular team and you just tell the result. Although you can get yourself in trouble because I was just walking past the green room in one stage and I saw the, the results of the X Factor on a Saturday night. Oh. And I thought it would be very funny if I said, and by, um, by the way, I can't remember who it was, so-and-so's won the X Factor. Well, you could have heard a pin drop. I really? mean, they were furious because they're all taping it. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'd, I'd give them the game. You failed they, to they say spoiler alert. Yeah, before. they didn't uh, They didn't like that one. No. <laughs> now, I know both of you from Emmerdale, of course. Um, and apologies if I do call you Chris, Jordan, because you, I really was watching the show at that, um, at that right. time. Mm-hmm. That's the buddy, buddy, Chris Tate, of course. It's part of the, uh, the Tate family. Yeah, I never, I never got to watch it. I was always in the studio working, but hmm. I gather it was quite good. Yes, it was. It was a close, it, it, that was really when it became, you know, started to take over as the big soap because it was always a little bit sort of more niche. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't so much niche. It, it was more uh, comfortable, and it, it was, you know, going in there and the first time it was, it was, it was daunting because we didn't actually know what we were there for, and mm. the press got hold of things and started saying that we're, we're there to jazz it up. So obviously with the likes of Sheila Mercy or Fraser or people, and it's, it was, I found it quite offensive, and uh, it, it wasn't meant in a way, and it was just the way the, the press grabbed hold of it. As far as we were concerned, we were just doing a job. Mm. You know, so it was all a bit oh, there was odd, no, There was no it? animosity towards no, you know, no, it. Was the, as you say, it was the press. Mm. We thought... No, it's just another family coming in. Yeah. Actually, take a bit the workload off us. <laughs> sure. Now, talking of families, I mean, you, am I right in saying you were there from the very start? Yeah, the very from first episode. The very first episode. Mm. As a Sugden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1972, it was. Yeah. Beckendale, as it was called, the Beckendale Royalty <coughs> of Sugdens. That's right. Much. Yeah, they were. And yeah. uh, lovely people. I mean, we, we got on so. I mean, Sheila was like a real mother to me. <laughs> in fact, when my, my own mother died, Sheila and her husband, Peter, they were going to adopt me, actually. Really? She said, you know, because we got on so well. And she was a great cook. She was like a real... Fantastic. A real yeah. mother. Fantastic woman. Mm. Yeah, so real, so the, one of the old, good old matriarchs of, uh, mm. of TV. Now, if anyone at, from outside of the UK, uh, they'll, they'll, they're probably I'm sure they'll have heard of Emmerdale. It was called Emmerdale Farm at the time. It and, was. It, and it was about farming. It involved farming. Oh, yes. We, we had to do the real work. When oh. we turned up to work that day, it didn't say Matt and Joe are... It says Matt and Joe are working. So whatever the farmer, Arthur, was doing, <clears throat> he had to stop. We had to step in. And whether it was sheep shearing or dipping sheep or what, driving yeah. combine harvest, that was, we loved that, driving the combine oh, with dark glasses on, all moody. Yeah, that was sure. good. But so, no, if you, <laughs> there was times then the dialogue didn't. I've got a sheep on its back. I'm shearing it. And I'm saying, 
Talking of Mar, what do you think? I mean, I just couldn't say the line. This <laughs> is a sheep with his legs in the air. <laughs> and and if you think it gets cold here, try it in winter there, yeah. doing farm scenes. Like I had to go and visit the farm or something like that. And uh, I remember doing a scene with Clive Hornby, played Jack, mm-hmm. and he was literally uh, shaving um, lambs. <laughs> and I was so cold, and we were trying to do this dialogue, and our teeth kept chattering. Really? And the yeah, sound yeah. said, you're going to have to stop that. I said, well, we can't stop it. It was so cold. Yeah, was... mum, mum always says that. She says, be looking at it, it's beautiful when it's sunny in, all, you know, oh, in the yeah. summer, but, uh, boy, it gets uh, chilly. It gets very remember cold. the old opening titles as well? Because they, they still show those. If you go up the dusty end of the TV channels, oh, right. you get the reruns of the you know the very early yeah. ones. And that opening, so it looks so bleak, the little farmhouse oh, yeah. <clears throat> on the horizon I mean, it's there. bleak, but beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. as you say, yes. I used to love the riding scenes, you know, with, with uh, Claire King. If you're working with somebody who can ride as well, Melanda couldn't ride so well, so you're always worried about, you know. <laughs> but Claire and I, we, we did hunting scenes and just jumping fences, and uh, really, oh, it was great fun. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I think there's, the, there's just all the occasional nod towards farming, like someone needs to call the vet or something, but it's it's, it's a lot more sort of different family sort of storylines yeah, these mean, days. I think it's got to be, I mean, I'm, I'll be honest, I, I haven't got time to watch it, but um, it did. That's where they went. They wanted to pull it away from the farming element, and there was a lot of uh, complaint about that. A lot of people said, well, I'm never going to watch it again <laughs> yeah. because, right. because of the yeah. lack of farming in it. And... Uh, you know, that's the sort of thing I enjoy, the farming bit of it. But obviously I was never really involved in that. No, sure. Am I right in thinking you were both there for the, the big sort of turnaround episode, the, the plane crash? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I lost both. my legs. Oh, yeah. that's how you became... Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Landed on my head. Ah, and uh, you were in the vehicle. No, I was in the... Broke yeah. Leg, you know, <laughs> in fact, I was married at the time, and I, and I was in the car crash, so I had all this makeup. So I just drove home with the makeup about two in the morning. Mm. And rang the doorbell at home. My wife opened it and I fell in. She said, Oh my God, what's happening? What's happening? I said, No, it's just make her. Oh, she clobbing me around the ear. Roll. <laughs> Don't you get me worried like that. But pretty effective, though, because it sounded like, Oh, look at this, they're getting desperate, you know, it's bringing a big dramatic storyline, but it really worked. And, it you know, worked, but three weeks of night shoots yeah. in winter. You yeah. didn't do it in the summer. Oh. It was cold. And I, I was lying on the ground one time in the box where the the pub had, had fallen on me. So it was just a space. It was like a little coffin that you crawled into. And obviously I couldn't use my hands because it was in the coffin. And they said, uh, just before I take this, can someone get the snow off Peter's face? <laughs> I thought, crikey, that's what it is. It was going in my eyes. So they were literally wiping the, mm. the snow off. It was that cold. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. it's like three in the morning, stop shooting at five in the morning. Everyone was absolutely yeah. exhausted. Mm. And, we had, and we had two directors at the same time. And I, I remember I finished at midnight and uh, I looked at my call sheet for the other director, seven in the morning. So I went, hang on a minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm called at seven o'clock. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, when am I supposed to learn the lines? Oh, don't be awkward, Fraser. I went, yeah. no, I finished at midnight. Yeah. And you've called me at seven. O'clock. And they, just, they didn't look at each other's schedules. That's, that's another thing I've heard as well, in, with, especially with the soaps, that um, because they went to so many days a week, you know, maybe three or every night sometimes, mm. you don't get much time to, uh, to learn your bits and rehearse or... No, no just no. rehearse. Rehearse. That's, 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 that's a swear word. <laughs> yeah, they sure. used to. We, it's, a tight, it's a tight old schedule. When I started, we, we, we um, used to have a day's rehearsal in the studio and I used to say, that's not long enough, I've got all these scenes. And when I left... I, there was no rehearsal. You knew it, and you went for a take. Mm. Yeah. And this is what, and you had to do it. Okay, you'd make mistakes, but it wasn't appreciated. But rehearsals, no, they're no, they're they're exist. soap actors. We don't got time for they that. Work very hard. They yes, do. I, I do gather that. Yeah, who looks glamorous? They, they, <laughs> they earn their, their money. Yeah, they, they do. Yeah, and anyone, and you hear actors that say, "Well, I'd never do a soap." So, well, do you think you could? Mm. Um, because it's it, they try and be derogatory about it, but. Any soap actor, particularly the main ones, the people that have got the main parts, are working night and day, mm-hmm. and uh, they deserve everything they get. Quite. When we first started, we we did six episodes a month. We do two weeks of out filming at the farm or the village, whatever, and then two weeks of studio. But you'd rehearse Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Producers run Thursday, and you're in the studio Friday. Mm. Yeah, and of course, um, th- th- that was nothing new to you, Crazy. You go back uh, a lot further than that. I was going to actually start with this because first thing that comes up on your Wikipedia 
is that you were in a film with Charlie Chaplin. That's right. <laughs> it's it's great. If, if I'm at a dinner party and somebody says, oh, Ian McKellen said to me the other day, well, I, I said, well, Charlie Chaplin once said to me, and the knife and fork, clack up. what? Yeah. And uh, my <clears throat> pal of mine, a uh, writer, he said, Fraser, I think you're, you must be one of the few actors alive that worked with Charlie Chaplin. And this was kind of his last main role. It wasn't his last film. Yes, it was, it was King yeah. in New York. King in New York, right. Yeah, yeah. and I, I said, I mean, I was 11 years old, and I suggested some comedy to him. And instead of him... Suggested. <laughs> brilliant to oh, Charlie yeah, Chaplin. Taking yes. your opportunity. And instead of him going, I'm Charlie effing Chaplin, I've written, produced, starring, director, he said, what's your idea of comedy? So I told him, he said, yeah, if we take that and then... We do that. Then we have the comedy. Mm. He listened to 11 years. So if I'm doing a panto and a little babe comes up and says, Mr. Hines, Mr. Hines, I've got a new, new joke. I don't go, listen, kid, I know, no, enough joke. I go, what's your joke? Mm. And nine times out of ten, I go on stage that night and use it and get a great laugh. Because yeah. Chaplin listened to an 11-year-old kid. Extraordinary. He was uh, a good uh, story, uh, though. Just a week to go till the Aladdin gets underway in Taylor de Moraira, the auditory there. And to have the two uh, principal stars, really, and both uh, former Everdale stars, Peter Amory and Fraser Hines, in with us this morning. You were just saying, uh, Peter, you saw OMD for like 50p back in the day. Yes, yeah, in Andrews Hall in um, Norwich. Uh, they just released this single called Ele- Electricity. Of course, Electricity. And yeah. um, they, were, uh, they were totally unknown, so to go and see them... It was it was fantastic. I love it when you see those old ticket stubs and the price. Of, you know, even a yeah, festi- I wish even a festival it. was like two pounds fifty. Probably, yeah. probably worth a, yeah, worth yeah. a few quid. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Twenty um, third of November, we're at uh, Fraser Hines is here, and we haven't even mentioned Doctor Who. No, <laughs> uh, because there was a big thing, of course. Because yesterday was the sixtieth anniversary of the JFK assassination. That's right. Yeah. When it was supposed to go out first, right? It was. And yeah. It but then that, put that back. took off. So they. They showed it a li- bit later. Mm. 60 of that. I can't believe it's 60 So that's years. today, 60 years ago. Yeah. Now, of course, you weren't in the first one with um, William Hartnell. You were on there with Patrick Troughton. Yeah, Patrick. He was lovely. Yeah. yeah. A lovely man to work with. Yes, I know people that used to see him bump into him around Stratford uh, occasionally, and he was, yeah. Mm, yeah. Been, well, he's one, I think one of his type. sons lives there, David. Right. David yeah, yeah, Trump, yeah. yeah. But um, were you a victim of, um, yes, I think so, of the sort of BBC's, you know, sp- saving money at the time? It's why we don't see many of your episodes, because they wiped the tapes. Yeah, they, they wiped the tapes, yeah. or they could rewind, you know, um, re- record over them. Record over them, yeah. yeah. But they, they, they found quite a few. I mean, they found a lot more than... Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm in the Guinness Book of Records, which a friend of mine uh, gave me a book about five, six years ago for Christmas. And I, um, yeah, all right. he said, no, no, Fraser, look at page seventy-two or something. I went, and it says Fraser Hines, the longest-running companion in Doctor. Yeah, it's Jamie, and, yeah. And it took me about two weeks to realise, actually, to get in the Guinness Book of Records, you've got to do something. You know, they can't just say, yeah, well, you, yeah, you swam the channel. You've got to be doing something really good. So I thought, oh, yeah, mm. Guinness Book of Records. Yeah, and that was the second Doctor, of course, and it was really starting to uh, gather uh, momentum then. And it's back, of course. Have you seen any of the, the more recent uh, No, no, no I haven't. I, but I did one recently, uh, the Tales of the TARDIS. Uh, my, I went yes. back with Wendy Padbury, and we shot that. Uh, we couldn't tell anybody. We, we were shooting. Uh, what were you doing in Wales? I said, I was at Doctor Who convention. You know, we, we had to keep it quiet until... The BBC, yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big. Uh, do you call, do, do call them Hoovians? Um, I don't know the fans. Anyway. Yeah, Hoovians, yeah, all right. Yeah, but right. Um, I, I love the, the Five Doctors, which you made a briefest of appearances in. Um, yeah, I was supposed to be in that all the way through, but Emma Dale wouldn't release me. Oh, right. So the, okay. and the producer said, Oh, I want you in it, Fraser Jerry. So I rang him up, so I got next Wednesday, Thursday off. He said, All right, yeah, great. And I, I fax, that's how long ago, came yeah. through and said, No, I, the Doctor's right. No, I. Is that it? I said, Well. <laughs> but I wanted yeah, to see Patrick and Wendy again, so yeah. I went down, and then after doing it, John Nathan turned just said it looked like you two had been in an, a prop cupboard for 16 years, because it was 16 years later. Right. He said, do you want to do some more? And I said, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we went to Seville, yeah, which okay. was great. Yeah, yeah. I have that on DVD for some reason. It's it's a great because uh, it's got the ones that I came up with. Although Tom Baker wasn't in it properly, was he? He was so they they featured a shot of him. In a five dot. No, they no. just used a, mm. a dummy. He was where I started really, yeah. and then uh, Peter Davison to follow, who I share a birthday with. So there we go. Now getting on back onto uh, Panto. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is Aladdin. As we said, it's you know it, it's brought up to date with the because the basic story's there, but then um, brought up to date script wise. And who's worked on this then? Are we giving them a, a nod here, a mention? Um, oh, we, 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 we've got a lovely princess 
Gabriella Pineda. She's, she's, she's lovely. She's a princess. Oh, you got the who's Pineda this time? Oh, Pineda. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, yes. <laughs> Pineda, yeah. <laughs> Gabby yeah. said Pined or something the other day. Oh, no. It's Pineda. Pineda, yeah. Uh, and you've, there's some local representation, I know, because we've you've seen a couple of uh, girls from the local schools, a couple of the international oh, yes. schools here. Yeah, yeah. so that, that was a nice little touch, I thought, to, to go go casting. And we've got Steve Barkley playing the dame, and he's great because he, he plays the <laughs> your favourite instrument. It, it, I've worked with Steve quite a lot, and when I see the ukulele come out, I find it quite uh, <laughs> quite astonishing. Yeah. And he's got the ukulele this time. Yeah. If you haven't heard it, it's very good, but mm. it's just my ears heard it a lot. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I saw him, um, I think I've only been to maybe one, a couple of pantos, and I have to say it was your uh, your ex-wife, in it, uh, I think it was Dick Whittington with Gemma Craven in. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. And you know the old tradition of um, a, a girl playing a boy is mm. the lead? Yeah. Uh, that was uh, that was quite something for a young lad growing up. I wasn't quite sure what to make of it, but oh. um, I did have, I did, yeah, I was, became quite a fan of hers. Well, I, I, call, I call Gemma Marinade because she left me overnight. <laughs> And, and friends actually say, I didn't want to. I've just seen Marinade on TV. It's, they all know it. <laughs> I don't want to bring anything up there, but I'll just sort of mention it anyway because it's, right. it's kind of relevant. But is that um, so? Just to remind us of who the so the main character that is uh, Aladdin, and that is a male playing that, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. All right, and you have uh, so you're the Emilio. He's great. I mean, he, he does break dances and he, he comes on oh, stage. That's very impressive. Oh, you and <laughs> run mm. around and da da. Yeah. And it's got all the uh, the usual elements in there, a bit of audience participation, do they? Oh, God, there's, there's, a, definitely, there's yeah. a lot of that. Oh, yeah. I think oh. you'd feel, I mean, I know it, it's become like a bit of a cliche, the old, oh, no, it isn't, and all that, but you, yeah. it, I think people would feel cheated if you didn't have that in somewhere. Oh, you've in got to have it behind you. Yeah, oh, yeah. yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, you've got to have all that. It'd be um, interesting because some of the kids here, obviously, that who were born here won't have actually seen uh, a panto, and, it'll, and also their Spanish kids tend to be a lot more polite hmm. um, right. than British kids will just, you know, yeah. they're not shy. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if they yeah. get, get free with it. What, what is your name? Is it PC? Uh, crackers. PC Crackers, <coughs> okay. PC crackers. I've seen, yeah, different, that, sorry, yeah, I've, I've seen different names for yeah. it on the, uh, on the various flyers, but uh, assisted by um, PC Bonkers? Yeah, that, that's Richard Mullins, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. And, um, yeah, so quite the cast. I mean, what they, uh, they, what they do here is there's a lot of um, sort of local uh, amateurs, if you like, that do put on productions, but um, this is a chance to see... You know, yeah. so class, what the local program. productions. They, it's usually are they for charity. Used to shouting out, and are they, cause you oh, they do, do all of that. Here, do you? No, well, it's it's not you know a Spanish tradition, obviously, but a lot of the Brits, the local people, do get together and they put on these shows, for, usually for charity. So it's for a good, uh, oh, good. good cause. Yeah, but, oh, but yeah, all, all the all so the they might elements. be used to you yeah, know yeah, yeah. Um, audience participation. But um, maybe this is a, a step up, I should say, oh. <laughs> next next level, <laughs> if you like. All right, we don't want to do anyone down in the arts, love. Well, no, no. <laughs> no, they're, doing their, they're doing their best. So this is from uh, next Thursday, then. Um, do we know about how getting tickets? Because uh, oh, wow. details, shall I ask you, or shall I just oh, read it off the flyer myself? Yeah, yeah the, the Costa, um, this is with Costa Pantomimes, of course. That's the company. So costapantomimes.com. dot com. Yeah. yeah. Or, or I did learn yesterday, instant ticket online. Yes. Um, the boss told me. And this is at the uh, the Auditorie, which is a nice bit of a local language for you, yeah. a Valencian name there, uh, tail out at Moraira. And that's quite uh, the venue. Have you, you've been in there, I presume? No, not yet. Oh, you no, seen no, it yet? No, I've, seen, I've seen some pictures of it. Yeah. Looks, yeah. Um, looks very impressive. Yeah. They just got two, two sold-out shows already, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. That's good. good to hear. <laughs> because this is um, another example of how it comes down to how little time you have to, to rehearse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You could kind of learn, and then Monday we get into the theatre, and I think that's when we, then you you do a tech run, and that's when they're doing that, so you're in the dressing room going... <laughs> that's where you start getting scared. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. You, don't, you still get nervous, do you, doing this sort of thing? I think everyone gets a bit Oh, yeah, yeah, you've got to. You just... Yeah. You just Learn to control it better, mm. Mm. hopefully. I did hear someone talking about, um, it's just that moment when you're in the wings, the difference between, you know, you could be standing there... Maybe just chatting, maybe a little bit nervous, mm. but then suddenly, when you see a pro actor do it, as soon as they walk out on stage, boom, just instantly into it. And well, you hope it's boom, as opposed what? to... Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just that change-up of uh, being a normal person, then going straight into character and giving it plenty, on a, particularly on stage acting, well, I have obviously. standing in the wings, and if we're talking about cricket or horse racing or something, <laughs> then I've got to say, right, 
just do my first three lines to wipe all that, you know. Mm. So you, I, I did it once before. I was just talking. I went straight back on stage. I went, ah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Right. I mean, just the, the, the tiniest of sort of refreshes, but you don't go into the whole the method thing. You've never, neither of you done, done all that. Oh, God, immersing no. yourself in the character. Oh, no. That's, that's dangerous. Yeah. If you're, you know, if you're strangling somebody, you might strangle them. Mm. You know, you've got but you to, hear the stories. I mean, the, the performances come out nicely, I mean, like Jim Carrey and that, but they go home, they take the character home. No one needs that 24 why they hours have a day. Mental illness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, and they have problems. It's like if you. If you if you have to break down in tears, the last thing you want to do is think about personal stuff. You just do it technically mm. because mm. you don't want to punish yourself. You, it's, it's a job. It's not real. So that method stuff, I never fully understand. No. I, 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 the, who was it that played Lincoln? And he had to be in the character. Oh, Dan, all, Daniel Day Lewis. All the time, and I, I kept thinking, well, when the director comes up and says, "Right, you come in, you sit down, you get a quill pen, and you write." Who is this man telling me, the, the president of America, what to do? Yeah. Well, he, yeah. He, he's yeah. famous for it, of course. Oh, yeah. Well, well um, Brenda Fricker um, tells a story who, who was in uh, My Left Foot. With mm. I'm, I'm not having a go at Dan Daylos, but he he spent the time and being fed um, his lunch and things like that. Really? Yeah, he, wow. because he couldn't use his hands. And, oh, and, he, and he did all that, and Brenda had to feed him. Uh, in the canteen, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's it's a little too far. I can, I I can mean, yeah, it's, He won an Oscar for it. Oh but yeah. He, well, yeah, sure. Everyone, uh, it's, it's a, it sounds like he's done with it now, though. He's uh, he's had enough. Well, it, I think there lies the answer. Mm, yeah, yeah, sure. He's probably punished himself. Yeah. He's absolutely yeah. exhausted and wants a quiet mm. life. I can understand maybe someone hanging on to an accent around set, you know, during the breaks. Yeah, and, and sometimes if, if, if that's you've got difficult. Spend, yeah. Mm. To, to get out of, mm -hmm. if you're if you, it's a strong accent, you you tend to just keep it going. I don't class that as sort of method acting. No, I think that's it's just, just that's a, pragmatic. A th yeah, that that just your brain is telling you that's what how you've got to speak. Whereas method acting, when you're talking about, you know, spoon feeding or, oh. <laughs> or you can't walk, so you have to be carried yeah. somewhere, which yeah. I think is no. Good. Well, more for her for feeding him. <laughs> she sort of said, oh. On well, I bike. guess he probably had uh, quite the say in the, oh. in the, in the production. A relationship, you know. Mm. You know. <laughs> yeah. Can both of you, can you, you cry on cue? Or do you have to go for the glycerine thing? No, I can, I can cry. Yeah. I can. But is that a thing where you think you have to think about something personal? Um, just a quick delve into it and then mm. carry on. But also the writing's good. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you, you, you can understand that it's, um, it, it's upsetting. If we open on Thursday, I'll probably cry <laughs> yeah. Thursday morning. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, what's the most horrific thing you can think of, Peter? We, we open next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd actually, I mentioned that um, WhatsApp we had through, and you'd never heard of it. It was The guy's amended it now. It's known as the Silver Sword. This is ah, you, Fraser. Absolutely. This is what yeah. you're in, yeah. Yeah, as a, as a that series. was the good old days when there was only BBC. The right. normal family would sit around, have Sunday dinner, and then they'd watch The Silver Sword. I um, remember The Silver Sword. Yeah. Well, Melvin Hayes. I must of have course watched Melvin it on repeat. Hayes. You must have, oh, yeah. Because it was before my time. Yeah, oh, mm. oh God, yeah. I must admit, it's, it's a new one on me. But, uh, you know, I'm... And, and, it was the, and the flashing blade. Oh, God, yeah. You got to fulfill what you want, what you do. You see, I still... Uh, <laughs> still was there in the front room. Yeah. <laughs> well, they had some good old uh, theme tunes back in the day, of course. Some Ronnie Hazelhurst, whoever. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I like the... Um, we're getting really off track here, just chatting now, but um, one of my favourite pub facts is, you know, some other to have them. Mm. Um, the theme to that. <whistles> yeah. You know, it's, um, that's him spelling out some mothers do have them in Morse code. Oh, is it? Yeah. Imagine the S-O-S-S-O at the start. So it's... Du -du 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 yeah. Ah. It's, it's spelling out the title of the uh, the series in, in Morse code. Not a lot of people know that. See, no, no off position on the genius <laughs> switch back <laughs> at the BBC there. It's, it's uh, like Dempsey Makepeace, who did the music for that. Was it Alan Parker or someone? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. There was some, if you look at the music, I always do, because I look at the credits, and some of those um, Houston films and, and LWT things, they had big names writing, uh, writing, directing, and composing the music. Mm -hmm. Very big. Mm. Just a week to go then, as yep. I say. And, uh, well, why wouldn't you come along to this? Because it's 
traditional, fun for traditional all panto, fun for all the family. Yeah. There's yeah. something for everyone. It'll be a good laugh. Um, we hope you enjoy it. But come along because you'll have fun. Mm-hmm. And until 15th of December. Yeah. And, and you're allowed to boo you. Can't we, we can boo you, can't we? Yeah, but very quietly. I get very upset. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so there's a musical turn in there as well. Chiman gets his ukulele out. Oh, oh yeah, Steve Barclay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's he, most. You'll enjoy it. He's very good. He and is the, very good. And the dancers are great. I mean, mm. the, the choreography is really good yeah, as well. It is actually. It is. It's, it's yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, there's so much more I could love to talk to you about, but uh, I'm sure let you get on. We've got to get back. To, yes. Yeah, you're going to get back to a day job. <laughs> yeah. No, appreciate your time. Thanks ever so much, guys, and uh, all the best. Well, with thank the you very much. Thank not, you, Moody. Not, not Moody. Yeah, I'm not supposed to say good luck, am I? It's, uh, <laughs> break a leg. Yeah. Break a leg. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Peter Amory and Fraser Hines, uh, Aladdin, starting next week in Taylor at Moraira on the Costa Blanca. Even if you're a little bit further afield, maybe worth making the trip with the family to come along and see that.